Once every 22 minutes, three times an hour, 64 times each day, someone steps on a landmine. Most are civilians, thousands are children. Most die. But for those who survive, what would their lives be like in five, 10, 20 years? The Landmine Survivors Network, the only organization founded by and for landmine survivors, helps victims reclaim their lives. I was hiking down the side of a hill, beautiful spring day, and boom! One of my friends came to me and turned me over. I saw that my right foot was blown off and my left leg was blown open. I had never even heard that you could step on landmines, and I had no idea there were landmines in Israel. And I had no idea that he was hiking in an area where there were landmines. So all of this was brand new. I kept thinking, landmines, foot, um, explosion, Jerry, what was he doing there? I was in a vehicle driving with my Somali staff to visit this refugee project site. I just remember the, the vehicle filling with dust, and my Somali colleague was to my right. And I looked at him, and his face was covered with dust. And he was looking at me. And I looked down at the floorboard, and I saw a foot. And I wondered if the foot was his or mine. You have so many questions about the severity of the injury. And the distance makes it so impossible to, I mean, you want to be there by that person's side, and you have no idea what they're going through. You can't communicate in words that sort of level of terror um, and pain and shock that my foot's gone. I mean, to stare and look at a bone, bone sticking out of your body and shredded skin and smell burnt flesh, these are things that no one should experience. I have such a heart for other mothers who have to see something that has happened to their children that they hadn't expected, that they never thought would happen. Um, I remember looking at where his foot was and eventually where his leg was not and saying to myself, I gave him his first leg, you know, I can't give him another one. I just remember looking at him just uh, just looking at him and trying to get a grip of what was left of him. A lot of organizations go in and say, this is what we can provide for you, take it or leave it. LSN goes in and says, you define what you need and we will help you find the resources. We will help you help yourself. The founding of LSN was an act of survivors helping survivors. Ken knocked on my door one day and wanted to have lunch and had just heard I was another amputee. He told me he was a landmine victim. I said, I couldn't believe it. Over burgers and salad, you know, he's showing me his, you know, deformed foot and his uh, new prosthesis. And uh, um, I thought this is sort of funny. To what other people would you talk over salad or dessert or coffee about such trauma? It's not just that the survivor is helping the newly amputated person, the new survivor. It's also an opportunity for the older survivor, somebody who's had an earlier injury, to help him or herself. To see you walk in and say, hello, my name's Patty Rosbeck, and I think you and I have something in common, and then I tap on my leg, and their face just lights up. Ono što naši koordinatori, koji su i sami žrtve mina, rade u bolnicama, pokazujući novim stradalnicima i amputircima dokazuje da LSM treba da radi. In many mine infested countries, people make less than $1000 a year. The most basic rehab for amputees in war-torn countries cost at least $10,000. LSM has found that using survivors to help survivors is a cost-effective way to improve rehabilitation and offer psychological support. LSN is establishing in-country networks in El Salvador, Bosnia, Ethiopia, Jordan, and Mozambique. They organize home and hospital visits, provide peer counseling, and link survivors to direct assistance 
all are staffed by landline survivors. فبقول لنا اجري مقطعين مركب اطراف الصناعيه وبشتغل وبروح وباجي وبعمل وبسوي بسوق سياره بشتغل كوافير بطلع دراج بنزل دراج بعيش حياتي عاديه بعمل اللي بدي اياه ما فيش عندي اي مشكله. حسيت انه هذا الزلمه انتشني كاني انا كنت واقع في بير انتشني وحطني فوق طلعني. رد لي رد لي جزء من الامل انا فقدت اجري اوريدي اوكي يعني هل انا هذه هون تنتهي حياتي؟ بس لما شفت انه هذا الزلمه مركب اجري قلت معناته انا ممكن امشي. We've identified six different areas that seem to make a contribution to people's psychological rehabilitation after a trauma. Uh, social support and peer visitation is at the very top. Early intervention and education about the trauma and about the amputation, extremely important. Faith and religion, sport and exercise, work, and the impact of family. To better link survivors with what they need, LSN keeps an up-to-date directory of rehab services in countries from Africa to Asia and creates educational material for families, survivors, and health workers. The U.S. is the most significant military power on Earth. It does not help in trying to get countries that are abusing landmines to ask them to sign when they say what the United States, with all its power, isn't willing to give up its landmines, is unwilling to sign. Americans need to speak up. They need to say that this is not to be tolerated. It's inhumane. We don't condone it. We don't support it. We want it stopped. Ken Rutherford came and testified before a committee I was chairing about landmine victims. I don't think there was anybody who was not in tears at the end of the testimony including the, the press who are covering the event. Tens of millions of landmines are buried in over 65 countries. It costs as little as $3 to make a mine, thousands to remove one. The only way to stop this tragedy is to stop production. LSN is a leading member of the Nobel Prize-winning international campaign to ban landmines. A leading achievement is the 1997 Global Mine Ban Treaty, making the manufacture, sale, and use of mines illegal. Thanks largely to LSN, the treaty also mandates assistance to landmine survivors. Over 135 nations have signed. The United States has not. Over 100,000 Americans have been killed or injured by landmines overseas. I feel that all Americans should be willing to help landmine survivors worldwide. Many of the mines planted around the world have American components in them. And I just feel that we sold these mines to people, manufactured them and exported. We have banned that practice right now, but we have not banned the use of landmines. If we had landmines in our neighborhoods or, or in the parks that we walk in here in the United States, for example, we would all say we've got to get rid of them. Well, that's a daily reality to a lot of people. Interestingly enough, the senators who have been among my strongest supporters, both Democrat and Republican, have been those who have been in combat and they'll be the first to say, we don't need them. By Princess Diana getting involved, she changed the discourse of the debate on landmines from military to a humanitarian issue. She listened. She listened to, to victims, to, to what they had to say, to their stories. And, and out of that came a sort of counseling. Such a basic human contact that she understood emotionally. We're very grateful and learned a lot from that technique that came so naturally to her, but is something that is um, what we practice and train in the survivors we work with around the world. It's all too well visiting people and raising awareness, money, and, and national interest. The most important thing is to do something about it. That's what concerned the princess most, and that's where Landmine Survivors Network came in. They were the people who would go back 
and make sure that these, these lives were put back together, that people could survive and move on and move forward. And isn't that a fitting and appropriate memory for the princess, to go forward and do things which she'd be most proud of? How can countries which manifest... Princess Diana played a, a pivotal role in promoting general popular awareness of the issue and its impact on the lives of innocent people the world over. Jerry White and Ken Rutherford approached me in 1998 to consider working with them. Queen Noor has been committed to so many of the issues that cross uh, the issue of landmines, the environment, development, disability rights, you name it. She's on the right side of so many grand issues, and landmines impact all of them. But it has to be a tank, a heavyweight. Landmines, I think, represent a particularly insidious obstacle to peacemaking, to peace building, and to um, the opportunity for people to rec recover from conflict and begin to live productive lives again. They're basic human rights. Reclaiming the lives of survivors means protecting the human rights of landmine victims. You're still the same person that you were before. You've just lost a small part of your body. And you will be able to get on with the rest of your life. LSN is profoundly committed to breaking down negative stereotypes towards all persons with disabilities. The right to education, to employment, the right to live the same life as other citizens are what are needed if victims are to become survivors. Opportunity, respect, and friendship are the best medicines in the world. When we chose the name Landmine Survivors Network, it was very deliberate. It was not Victims Network or Poor Us Network. It was the most empowered word we could come up with that sent a positive signal and image about people overcoming these injustices uh, and, and horrible injury and pain. And I think that's what I see and, and like to communicate to others, that survivors are strong. Survivors can make a difference.